Hi, this is Mary Kay. Thank you for joining me on YouTube and our little Zoom class. We are painting a red shoulder hawk today. The prep work that I did for this painting so far was that I ran off this picture on my computer and I'm using a six inch by six inch piece of paper. I like the square format because I did it on a card, this one here, and I started elongating him instead of making him kind of bulky. So I think it looks good that way. I used two different types of tracing paper. I used both non-water soluble and I, I did the dark outlines on that and water soluble where I did anything that was not a dark line. I put these two marks here so that I could line it up again if I needed to. Just a little trick that I use. So there's my sketch. This is actually kind of an old piece of paper. There might be some smudges. So the most important part of painting feathers, I'm changing my screen here. Oops. There. Ah. I'm sorry, this is, I'm trying to be able to see everybody. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Oh well, I'll go this way. I'm still figuring out all this zoomy stuff. So the, the, when you're painting feathers or fur, fur and feathers, the thing to do is to paint it wet into wet. So, and then you can go back in and do all your little details, but to get that, that soft feel, that's the first step is wet into wet. my picture okay great so I'm gonna start with this head and and the, um, the belly so oh, I didn't sketch that part right there mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave that little yellow beak part I'm going around the beak and around the eye I'm just wetting it just not not sopping wet into wet just a little bit wet into wet I'm going to do the wing uh, second after this part here. This part here can either be wet or you can wait. Okay, so I wet that. The color of his head is burnt sienna. Did you wet the belly as well? The, the belly. I did wet the belly, okay. yes. The belly and the head. Okay, thank you. And the color is burnt sienna. But that burnt sienna, I, it, it seems like it's almost just the perfect color, but I see a little bit of gold in there too. So I have a little bit of quinacridone gold. I'm gonna put it in. And then that color just seems like the, seems like the feathers to me. So when I put this in wet, it does its blossoming. Going around the eye. So the eye. Around the peak. I'm such a beautiful bird. I always tell myself I'm going to become a better birder, but 
I just am not very good at being able to identify them. And I think I should be good at this because I'm an artist. I see detail all the time. But I don't know. I really admire all the birders. So this is where I'm painting over my pencil line, way over. <laughs> making a mess. It's getting wider. It's just like a lighthouse. Tend to be kind of a bit of a loose painter, I think. So I actually, I kind of like that start right there. Uh, now in my photograph that I've printed off my computer, I have a lot of stray lines because I still have that one jet that's, that's kind of blocked. So I have these white lines across. But in the belly, there are little light feathers. So what I'm going to try to do is even just lift them out now, just so I clean my brush, I dry my brush, and I'm just picking some spots to just kind of lift out little whites. I'm not trying to get every one of these in the right spot. I'm just trying to suggest that there's little light, some light areas in these, the belly feathers. So that's the first step. No, I actually think that, I think that's kind of a good place to stop and let you guys paint that. Thank you. So mine is dried now. And what I'm gonna do now is work on the head and the feathers around the head. So it's the same colors, but this time I'll add a little bit of, well, I'll just start with a little bit of this and see how it goes. So what I'm gonna do is just start painting, just adding in these darks of these feathers over on the top of the. Now, did you add another color to that, Mary Kay? No, I okay. didn't. Not yet. I'm going to, though. Okay. So I'm just putting in another layer. And this can... And that color is it's pure, burnt sienna? It's pure burnt sienna. Okay. So far, but I'm going to add... My next layer is going to have French Ultra in it. So I have a little... There's kind of a white spot that I didn't leave. I could lift that a little bit. I didn't leave the white there. I painted right over that. So now I'm trying to lift it. Might lift. Because it's burnt sienna, it, lift, it lifted a little bit. I could keep working it, but I think that's good. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going and adding these. So I'm painting the direction of these feathers, and I'm using just the tip of the brush. And I'm so yeah, I'm painting. And so if the feathers go around the eye, then I paint that shape that way. If they're headed out, I paint them that way. These guys have some white ones. And it makes it makes a little almost like a little ridge of feathers in his head here before it goes to his belly. 
So that's one more layer. And now I will take my burnt sienna and add French ultramarine blue to it. And get a much darker brown. And I'm going to start adding another layer of darks to this. I don't know if you can see my hand gets in the way, doesn't it, when I'm painting right here. This is going to be somewhat tedious. So I really don't see any reason for you guys to be watching while I paint in these feathers. I think you can get started too. But he really has some eyeliner. And we thought we were the only ones who wore eyeliner. Yeah. <laughs> Where the feathers get a darker brown, I just add more French ultramarine blue to the burnt sienna.
I just added a little bit of permanent rose to my burnt sienna because it seems like some of the colors right in here are even oranger than pure burnt sienna. Now we're going to fill in the eye and the beak. I'm going to start with that nice bright yellow around the, around the top part of the beak. So I just bumblebee. Just a tiny bit of bumblebee. Over here. It does have some burnt sienna or some warm orange in it. So it's what I have is a little bit of permanent rose and burnt sienna right there where my brush is. And I'm just going to add it to the top of this. When it dries, I'll put in the, I think it's a nose hole some of that over here. Okay, and then his beak part is just that dark brown that we make all the time, which is burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue. Heavy on French ultramarine blue. This is all dry. There's a little white line. Right there. Just gonna paint with just a tiny bit of water. Here. And that little spot. Oh, I, I do need to, let's see. Oh. This nose hole, I guess. I don't really don't know birds. So there's the beak. Just Pansy yellow medium or bumblebee with a little bit of warm orangey color and then the dark. And the eyeball. I see the round iris as almost pure burnt sienna. And there's a highlight. I always talk about there, every time you ever do an eye, there has to be a glint in it. I see the glint in this eye in the iris. So as I'm painting the iris, pure burnt sienna, I'm gonna leave a glint. A couple little, two little white circles. highlight in the iris also. I'm going to mute it and blow dry the eye so that I can put the darks on.
Now I'm going to make more darks. Again, it's French ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Mixed pretty more thickly now, less water. So you almost get a perfect black. Just going to go in and put in the pupil. And if you, if you really want to leave a glint in the pupil, you can. Nobody's going to know where the glint was. Always looks good with a glint everywhere in the eye. And then it's dark around the iris. I'm going to lose my glints. Just little bits of whites. And then I think I'll put another layer on the beak so it's even a little bit darker. Oh, that's a hawk head. So the last step I think uh, we have before we move on to the wing is that we need to put a few feathers into the belly. And again, that's just going to be burnt sienna mostly. And I'm going to just put a few in with the belly of my brush and see how it looks. Let's see some really dark ones right in here. Yeah. So first I used the belly of my brush and now I'm just using the belly of my brush with just water. So just try to get the feel of a few more feathers in there. <clears throat> I'm not painting every one of these all by itself. It does seem a little darker, a little closer to the wing. So then leaving whites. I almost see some yellows in this part of the belly. So I'm going to use a little bit of clinacrinone gold. Just touch it and see what happens. It's not that yellow. Mix it in. Ooh. So the next, there's three more steps. One is the dark part of the wing and the red part of the wing and then this dark spot and then the background. So I'm going to work on the, the dark part right underneath here and down the side and then do the, uh, you know what, I changed my mind. I'm going to do the, the red part of the wing. That's just, again, it's burnt sienna. Now I'm going to do dry on dry here. So. This is the bright part of the wing that, that makes it a red winged black, or not a red winged black bird, <laughs> a red shouldered hawk. So beautiful. So that's pure burnt sienna. Right in here. And into that then goes the darks. So I'll let it dry a little bit and put the darks in. And while that's 
while this is kind of drying, I'm going to go into the part that's in shadow underneath here and down the side. So that is burnt sienna and French ultra. I'm starting off with this much color, but it's much darker in the, the photo. There are some little light areas. I can just lift them or not paint them. And I need to go back over this because it's much darker than I've got it. So that's one coat, and I'm going to go in again with another another coat right over the top while it's still damp. There we go. That's much better. A lot more burnt sienna. I'm sorry, French ultra. Okay, here we go. This is a spark. The part you were talking about, Elaine. Yes. And the whites in this area aren't perfectly white. They actually have a little bit of like um, French ultramarine blue on them. They're just a little bit on the gray side. So I don't want them perfectly white because they're, they're white in a shadow. So they're going to show up as very, very light bluish gray, the highlights there. And then so that's that little, that, just that little shadowy spot along the side here. And now there's darks in the red part of that wing of the shoulder. So I'm going to use that same color I just made, exactly the same. So it's <laughs> French Old Marine Blue and Burnt Sienna. <laughs> Did you dry it in between? No, it's still, it just dried on its own. Okay. So now I'm going to see how this kind of just, yeah, it's still damp, so that's good. I want it to be a little bit soft, or maybe I'm just kind of brushing it. Yes, yeah, so I'm just, I'm going to add paint with a little bit of water. It's a little too, too harsh. That's just kind of feels like it. We didn't get it perfect, but that's okay. Now I kind of feel like that red shoulder could even be redder. I could go in and make the burnt sienna with a little bit of permanent rose and put a little another wash over the top of some of it. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Burnt sienna with little permanent rose. That makes it feel like that's, that's a red-shouldered hawk. So now there's, shall I stop or keep going? Ooh. So the next to the last step is to do this part in here and it's just really leaving those whites. The whites on the right side towards the belly are pretty close to just pure white and the whites on the left side of this wing are 
a little bit gray, a little bit gray. So again, these colors of this part here are French ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. They vary. So it's just, we just have to patiently just fill in, fill in the feathers and leaving the whites. So I think you guys can paint that right along with me. This is kind of where I start to lose a little patience. Yes, it is. I'd rather just sort of. <laughs> Not detail, is that what you're saying? Yeah, just sort of more suggested. I think that's why I love painting with Evelyn so much because she did a lot of, not so much detail. Mm -hmm. I see what you mean about the detail. I just have to paint some dark feathers with some white lines. And vary the color in the dark feather parts.
There's a couple little spots in these dark feathers that are little flecks of burnt sienna. Those are nice. Put some of that in there to change it up a bit. I'm going to mute mine and dry it. So the, the very last step to this wing is to get some shadowing in the whites on the left side of this wing. So all that is is just this a little bit of our gray with more French ultramarine blue in it. Very light, lots of water. I'm just going to paint over the top of it now that it's dry. And that should put a little cast of grayish blue on the whites of that feather part. And then there's the tiniest bit of it here in the part next to the belly, but it really kind of is very white. The whites are white right in here next to the belly. That's, I have a little weird shape right here. And what color was your shade again? The what? What shade? <laughs> The shade. The shade on the white uh, yes. of this wing is really mostly French ultramarine blue. Okay, thank you. With just a tiny bit of burnt sienna. So it's very light. So the only white paper that's left is the whites around these dark feathers on the right side of that wing. I have to figure out what I've done wrong here. I think this should be going. Too light. The last step is just to get a little background on it, and it's all blue. The blue that I mixed up here is cerulean and French ultramarine blue. I'm not going to add in the Antwerp at this point since there's no Antwerp in the rest of the painting. 
So it's a nice petal, very wet. Oh. But the cerulean is, is semi-opaque, and so it goes a little bit chalky, but that only matters if you're mixing up the colors with other colors. So we just need to get this on nice and even without going over the part we already painted. So what color was the cerulean and what? French. Okay. Cerulean and French. So what I said was that it wasn't time to add any Antwerp because we didn't have any Antwerp anyplace else in the painting. So I'm just going to kind of test it over here in this spot. I kind of, let's just see. I go up like that and then I come right next to the part I've already painted and then brush it out to the paper. Okay. Oh, I think we can do it. So it's dry paper and a nice really big petal and I'm trying not to go over any of the bird. Oh, and I like how it's granulating. That part's nice. So if I work out here, and I'm not going to change it. I'm just going to put this all in solid. And then I'm really careful when I come in next to my feathers. Because if I go over them, I oh, it's better to leave a white line than to go over them, I think. I'm just going to twist around. I mixed enough paint. I'm starting on the edge and working in. And I don't want it to dry anywhere before I get, get it all in. Because then I'll have spots, I'll have lines. This one, if I go over, it's not so big a deal because it's so dark. Okay, just got to get in around in this little beak spot. I might even sign it. I'll sign it the way uh, Linda's been signing it, all these different ways. Well, how is that? Just been, Linda's been signing her paintings like different spots and up and down. So I'm going to sign this sideways right here. over it. There I have it. I'll go ahead and take my tape off right now. I can take tape off when things are wet. Unlike PDO, as long as I'm careful. That's the great thing about using tape as masking, is that you can lift it up while the paper's still wet. Okay. 
this piece of paper was from this summer, so, and it, I think it got caught a few times. I drug it out of the car this morning so that tape was hard to pull off. Oh, there it is. Wow, lovely. Thank you. It's a good contrast, those colors with the blue. Yeah, it feels regal. Ah, very birdie. Look nice. at the eye. Oh, and it's, it's, it's beautiful. That's yeah. nice. It's really nice. Mary Kay, how do I, how do I get to see other people? <clears throat> wow, very nice. Very, very nice. He's Thank a you. shouldered hawk, and boy, the beak is good, and the eye is good. You did beautiful on your feathers. Yeah, that's beautiful. Nice. Very, very nice. Oh, Char. Ooh, lovely. Char, yeah. beautiful. Nice. It's really <laughs> soft. The feathers are really soft. Yeah. Yeah, you're on mute, so we don't know what you're saying, but we know that you're gesturing at the feathers. I think he looks like a robin with the with the predator beak. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really, because he's got he's got a predator beak. He's got those eyes, nice glint in the eye, and I like how you did the feathers, just putting those black lines or yeah. the wing. Kind of you muted. Can, like trace every one you just put in so it it reads it reads hawk feathers yeah beautiful char thank you i'll put mine up yep Woo. Ooh, wow nice mm -hmm. can can you pull it? Yeah, or do a little bit. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there it is. Very nice. Wow. Pretty. Yeah. Thank you. I think the, the one thing you could still do is shadow that wing on the left side of the wing. Just yeah, a little, little bit of French ultramarine blue over the, the wing on the left side of the wing. Leave the white, leave the right side of it white and like you have it. So it's almost like a disappearing edge, like it goes yeah. from pure white to shadowed. So you're really shadowing the whites. Yes. Yeah, I think that will just, that will be good. All right. Okay, Vicki. Okay, there's another one. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Wow. Nice. Really nice. You did it. It's it's beautiful. You're all you're just it's all beautiful. We have such a good photo to work from. Uh, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. uh, I like the format. I like your background. I like uh your belly looks mm -hmm. like soft feathers. I like all the little feathery work you did in his head. Yeah, that's very nice. Mm -hmm. I like how you change the shapes in the wing. I like his beak and his eye you got a nice glint on the eye really nice job see now that's one that should be mounted or matted in the six by six inch frame yeah. really nice thanks mary Kay. chris Since, since we did birds, I have a painting of Evelyn's that I wouldn't mind. Sh oh, have you, you haven't shown yet, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, let's, we'd like I'm to see sorry. Evelyn's painting after we look at the yeah. bird buddies. I thought we had finished. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, Chris. Wow. Beautiful. Oh, wow. Amazing. Yeah. I yeah. like how the burnt sienna worked over the ink. Yeah. yeah. So, so I don't know if you heard this part, Char, when we started. Chris had did this as her Inktober, so it's all inked first. So she was just adding adding in the colors. Yeah, I saw it. It's she's very good. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. I love, I love how you work the burnt sienna and the darks in that in the wing is beautiful. 
It's really Thank well you. Done. Yeah, his eyes really good. Beautiful, Chris. Thank you. I'm so impressed with what talent I see here. It's just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Who did I miss? Penny I Arlene? Arlene's? I showed mine. Okay. Does anybody want to show theirs again? Are we good? Yes, everybody's. Okay, so we would like to see Evelyn's painting, Shar. It's not a, it's parrots. Okay. <laughs> wow. Minute, so people can see. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. nice. <laughs> With a bamboo. And she has yeah. her, that, keep holding it up, Shar. Yeah. So what oh. Evelyn, Evelyn was, I'm known for many things, but one of the things was that she had these mats that had gold liners and then she put them in gold frames. So just, and then she also did ovals and rounds, which are very unusual. Mm -hmm. So that speaks Evelyn. And then she did the bamboo and you know, she just had such a loose freedom mm -hmm. to all her paintings. So I love that there's very distinct feathers, points. I mean, it's very precise. But the colors within each bird are blended really like it was wet on wet or something. It's really pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was very patient. <laughs> she can do amazing things. She, she was amazing. We love her so much. I think that's everybody. And thank you for showing that, Char. It's been lovely. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Mary Kay. Thank Thanks. you.